Okay, so in this video, we will consider an exceptional trigonometric integral, but let's first start with an easy one. What if we ask to integrate tangent cubed of x? Well, the idea here is to rewrite this as the integral of tangent of x times tangent squared. And now replacing the tangent squared by secant squared minus 1. Let's multiply out. And I'll separate the integral. So the first one will be the integral of tan of x secant squared dx. minus the integral of simply tan of x. Now both are quite easy. Here we have everything is a function of tangent times the secant squared dx, so we of course make a u substitution letting u be tangent. The differential of u will be secant squared of x dx. So all we have is the integral of u du, which of course from the power rule is u squared over 2, minus, and now the integral of tan of x, if you remember, is simply the ln of secant of x in absolute value, plus c. And we convert back to a function of x, replacing u by tangent, and so we get the tangent squared of x over 2 minus the ln of secant of x in absolute value plus c. So a fairly easy integral. We factor the tan squared, replace by secant squared minus 1, expand out, you have two integrals and they're both rather easy to solve. One that we have solved in the past and one that is doable with a simple u substitution. So obviously this is not the exceptional integral. What if we ask now, what about the integral of secant cubed of x dx? I mean, how hard can it be? It's so close to tan cubed, you know, obviously if we play the same game, it's going to have to work. And the answer actually is no. And I will leave this up to you. But if you try to integrate secant cubed, playing the same game we played for tangent cubed, you will go in circles forever. And it will get you nowhere. The integral of secant cubed will keep cropping back up, and you'll never get rid of it. The idea here, and again, this is why this is an exceptional integral, is to break up the secant cubed as a secant of x times secant squared, and now apply integration by parts, where we let u be secant of x, and if you recall integration by parts, it is the integral of u dv. So once you make your choice of u, everything else, including the x, must be your dv. And if you recall integration by parts, is the integral of u dv, which is what we have now, is uv minus the integral of v du. So we need to find our du, and we need to find our v. Well, du is quite easy. u is secant of x, and so the differential of u will be the derivative of secant times dx. The derivative of secant is, of course, secant of x, tan of x dx. So we have our du, and of course, to get v from dv, we must integrate. So v is the integral of dv, but that's the integral of secant squared of x dx, so we're looking for an antiderivative of secant squared, that of course is simply tangent. And if you recall when we do integration by parts, when we find v by integrating dv, we do not need to add a constant of integration. And so now we're good to go. And again, very non-obvious first step. This is what you sort of try after 
playing a similar game fails and fails miserably. So what do we have now? The integral of u dv is u secant of x times v tan of x minus the integral of v tan of x du secant of x tan of x dx. So this is what we have. The integral of secant cubed of x dx equals this after applying integration by parts once. Well, let's simplify a little bit here. So we have the integral of, if we put the two tan together, we get tangent squared of x times secant of x dx. And this integral is not trivial either. We can't factor a secant squared, there's only one. If you factor a secant tangent, that leaves you with a single tangent, and you will then have to convert this into a secant, and this will be the square root of secant squared minus one. Again, a very difficult integral. So it looks like we're stuck again. But let's try and replace tangent squared by secant squared minus one. And again, one plus tangent squared is secant squared. And so secant squared minus one is tangent squared. Now let's separate the two integrals. We'll have secant squared times secant, secant cubed, minus the integral of secant. But of course, this will be negative, so it'll become positive. So let's see what comes out. And I'll put this one first. So I have the negative of negative 1, so it's positive integral of secant of x dx. And now the negative of secant squared times secant is the negative of secant cubed. And now you're saying, well, we're no better off. We apply integration by parts on secant cubed. We use this substitution, and we got this and the integral again. The great thing is we know what this is. And so we can isolate in the expression for the integral of secant cubed. So let me just isolate, well, solve this integral. So this is secant of x tan of x dx. Plus, and if you remember, this was also a special integral that was obtained using a very clever u substitution, and the integral of secant of x dx is the ln in absolute value of secant of x plus tan of x. And of course, minus the same integral, secant cubed of x dx. But as we've just said, this equals the integral of secant cubed. And then we have cooked up an equality, namely this expression being equal to this, where we can isolate the given integral. So add the integral on both sides. So what do you have then? And I'll write this on the left. So I'll have the integral of secant cubed plus the integral of secant cubed, so it's twice the integral of secant cubed. And then we're left with secant of x tan of x plus the ln of secant of x plus tan of x. And finally, we can now isolate the integral by multiplying both sides by one half. And so the integral of secant cubed of x dx will be one half times secant of x times tangent of x 
plus one half, because we multiply both sides, so all of it by one half, the ln of secant of x plus tan of x in absolute value, and of course plus the constant of integration. And so we catch our breath, and we just look at how beautiful this is. The integral of secant cubed of x dx is a half secant tangent plus a half ln of secant plus tangent in, of course, absolute value. So this is really what you would call an exceptional integral. We had to use by parts, again, as a long shot, seeing what comes out, replacing tan squared by secant squared minus 1, and somehow we got a new integral that we knew how to evaluate, and the old integral cropped back. And so then we were able to isolate for it purely algebraically and arrive at our final answer. So from now on, if you ever have in one of your trigonometric integral the integral of secant cubed of x dx appearing, you do not have to rederive this all over again. You can simply take this for granted. And of course you have a similar result for the integral of cosecant cubed. You can derive the result in the exact same way that we did for secant cubed. So I will leave this up to you as an exercise. But if you do, you will arrive at, and you can probably guess what the end result is, if you integrate cosecant cubed of x dx, you will get, of course, as the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent, you will arrive at negative one-half cosecant cotangent. And of course, negative one-half, the ln of cosecant plus cotangent. Plus c. So the same thing except you get negatives and replacing the secants by cosecants and the tangents by cotangents. And you'll notice, and this is my concluding remark, in all of our videos of trigonometric integrals, we haven't looked at integrals of cotangent and cosecant. And the reason is very simple. You tackle integrals of secants, of cosecants and cotangents in the exact same way that you would tackle an integral of secant and tangent. So if you ever have cosecant, cotangent cropping up into your integral, ask yourself how it would solve the integral using, if it were secant and tangent, and essentially just squeeze in a negative and you're good to go. And so that's it.